Oh hi, it's Rob, and back in the kitchen today. Got a special recipe for the holiday season. Um, it's coming up, and if you're like me, you're sick of turkey and turkey leftovers and turkey biscuits and all the various turkey things, and you want something a little different. So I want to bring you something a little different for the holiday season. Uh, this is a recipe that I came up with over eh, some searching and some ideas that I've got. And uh, it's a variation on another recipe, or actually a family of recipes. But I wanted to try and bring this to you and let you know that it's not that hard. It's something that you can do. Uh, it's, it's as simple as roasting a turkey. Um, Maybe a little bit more complex. It's a little different, but it's the basic kind of same thing. Uh, this I am calling Canard Boitreau à l'Orange, or Orange Lame Duck. Now this is in honor of our president for the past four years and his service to our country. I would like to call this Duck Trump. Hey guys, uh, wanted to let you know I had to split this one up into two different parts. So this is part one. It is on the preparation of the duck and the cooking. Part two is going to be on creating the sauce. And that's going to have to wait until next week because otherwise I would end up with a horrendously long video. Um, if you want to cook this, go ahead and cook it. You can do uh, various different sauces with it. There are sauces available that you can get in the store and will do pretty well. And for instance, this duck came with orange sauce packets that are perfectly fine to use. They're not, you know, the the, the orange sauce that comes with duck out of Um But if you want to cook it, you can. If you want to wait until next week and get the real stuff, then you can get that too. Anyway, on with the show. Okay, while well, this recipe is relatively simple, it does take some time. There's, you need some time to prepare the uh, duck ahead of time. Now, I happen to get all natural duck. Um, I would suggest staying with natural duck because the cyborg ducks tend to be a little crunchy and sometimes you can break teeth on the little metal parts. These they have uh, been brining in the bag uh, with a combination of water and sea salt. So they are pre-brined, they've got a lot of the, the salt flavor in them, uh, but you know we still need to process them and deal with them, so we're going to do that. First thing that you want to do after you've unwrapped the duck, uh, you could wash it if you want, uh, but you know, dry it off a little bit with some paper towels. Uh, there's stuff inside, and uh, there's, you know, it's like turkeys used to come like that, the last couple that I've gotten don't come with a lot of it, but for instance, this one came with an orange sauce already. Uh, this is not the sauce we will be using, but it is a perfectly serviceable sauce for other things. Uh, does come with a lot of, you know, the gizzards and the liver and um, various bits and pieces, neck, more bits. Uh, light bulb, uh, small cephalopod. Anyway, uh, you want to make sure that you get all of it out. Uh, some of it tends to hide up in the neck, so you want to make sure that you clean it all out pretty good. Your hands are going to get really gooey. Once you've got all the, uh, the innards pulled out of the, the duck, uh, you want to blanch it. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, one is you can try and scare it. You can also threaten to hold the duck over a boiling pot of water. Or you can dunk it in boiling water for about two minutes. Blanching helps tighten the skin and helps uh, release a little bit of the fat from under the skin. So this is what the duck looks like after it's blanched. You can tell it's firmed up a little bit. The skin is firmed up. Uh, some of the pink color is gone. Um, it is a, it's a little easier to work with now. It is also much more greasy because some of the fat started to render out a little bit. So, all right, one of the first things we want to do, now this one is actually missing this part of the wing, is to take a very sharp knife and cut 
the end of the wing away. The wingtips on ducks just burn really easy. There's almost nothing there. Second thing we want to do is again, sharp knife. We want to cut on the back side and get in here. Now this is a little tricky part. You want to get under the skin and the fat layer, but don't cut, don't cut all the way through the skin. Get in here and try and find your way to the leg joint. You can feel it in here. It's quite loose, but get into the space in between and cut in the joint. Now another thing you can do is to slice skin up the leg here. This will make it easier to try and remove the bone. And once you get it out far enough, go underneath the bone. Watch your sharp knife so that you don't poke yourself. Not that I'm you know, speaking from experience or anything. Make sure that the skin is underneath the knife and just cut through. I'm going to try and keep as much of the meat as you can, uh, but get the bone out. And this is part of the skill of deboning. Uh, I call it the laming because you're removing the legs um, and it fits in with the theme of what we're doing. Tuck it under. You can separate the skin a little bit here if that will make it easier. And then the neck. Now, there's a couple things you can do with this. There's a large amount of fat in the neck. Um, I like to keep it and just tuck it. Makes it a little easier when you turn it over. So now we have a sort of a tardigrade looking duck. And you can see the legs are gone. So this is a lame duck. Okay, now comes spice time. Uh, what I've got is some uh, nice big sea salt. This is actually some smoked sea salt. I've got some finer grain sea salt that's a little, or smoked salt that's a little, a little different flavor. Some freshly ground black pepper. And the zest of two oranges, or you know, one good size orange. Uh, you know, it's the time of the year when large oranges just aren't available, so this is actually one small orange and a couple of tangerines. Tangerine zest is actually quite good. Um, I like to put on the zest first. Uh, it's a little, a little harder, but you want to try and get it in all those little cracks, all those little marks that you made, little cross hatch patterns. I'm going to add some of the uh, some of the smoked salt. Be generous with the salt. It is what does a lot of the transmission of the flavor. This is some Malden smoked sea salt. It's a large flake. Um, I like it a lot. It adds a very nice flavor. And that is good. I'm going to add a little bit more down here, but the main idea is we want to let this sit and kind of soak into the meat and do its magic for a couple of hours in a refrigerator. Uh, or if you're lucky like me and the outdoor temperature is just above freezing, as it is here in, uh, in happy, happy Minnesota, uh, I'm going to put this outside in a box 
so that the dogs can't get to it. First I'm going to uh, concentrate on the preparing stuffing for the duck. And yes, it is stuffing. It's going inside the duck. Don't judge me. Or if you do, don't judge me harshly. Uh, got green onions, shallots, and some oranges. I don't know if two is going to be enough. I might go with three. But we'll find out in a bit. Actually, probably going to need three because I'm stuffing two ducks. Um, I'm not going to be stuffing them full. That's part of the... Uh, Part of the magic of this is the duck is going to, well, duck is different than turkey in that way. You do not need to stuff it full in order for it to kind of keep its shape. It's going to have a shape, and we're not sure what that shape is going to be at the end, but we'll find out, right? So we're going to prepare these. You probably have seen people. Um, cut oranges and peel shallots before, so I'm going to save you the trouble. So this is what I've got to put inside the ducks. Um, some shallots and oranges. I'm going to keep this out for a little garnish afterwards. Uh, the shallots, I one of them, you know, some of the peeling came off, so I sort of julienned it. Uh, and then the bottom part of the, you know, the white part of the onions are going inside. Okay, the duck is done. I'm gonna open it up and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Skin needs to be crisped. But uh yeah, those are some ugly ducks. Alright. So the next thing is going to be doing crisping the skin. So I got them out of the roasting pan and onto a raised rack on top of a shallower baking pan. I'm going to pop this in the oven at uh, 425 degrees with the broiler. And we're going to, first of all, try and crisp up the skin on the top. Should only take a few minutes. I'd say probably 10 to 12 would probably do it. Um, we want there to be uh, air circulation on the bottom too so some of the heat can get underneath. I'm going to be pouring out the grease and the pan drippings from the roasting pan. Uh, what I've got here is a big bowl and a strainer that fits perfectly inside. These didn't come together I swear they, they just managed to fit really well. 
So you want to do this after it's cooled down a bit because uh, it can get kind of dicey. Now you can use the pan drippings to add to the sauce, give it a little bit more of a duck flavor, but honestly that sauce is so concentrated in flavor right now it's ridiculous. So what I'm doing is pouring these off into the bowl and then we'll try and pour that into something that's a little smaller so that the fat can separate into a layer on the top. this marvelous stuff can be added in cooking. So I got a little over a quart, um, just a quart and a little bit, and you can already see the separation of that uh, nice duck fat layer on the top. So you will let that cool down until the duck fat solidifies and then separate that and keep it for marvelous tasty cooking things. And here we are. They're out of the oven, they're crisped up. There's a nice crispy crunchy uh, layer on the skin. And they are cooked all the way through. And they're ready to be, uh, ready to be plated up.